Okay, hi, so in this video we're going to speak about titrations and then move on to calculations involving titrations. So the first question really is, what is a titration? Well, a titration is basically an experiment that you carry out in order to work out the amount of something needed to react with something else. Now, when we're doing this in chemistry, normally this is going to be acid plus base. So acid plus base reactions okay now when an acid and a base react together we're assuming that they're strong acids and strong bases when they react together we're going to have what is known as an end point okay and the end point is where all of the acid and all of the base have reacted together completely so the end point is when acid and base have reacted completely. Okay, let me give you a quick example. Let's say that we had a known amount of hydrochloric acid. Okay, a known amount of hydrochloric acid, and what we're going to do is we're going to react that with sodium hydroxide. Now, in a titration, we have one of them, one out of the two, in this case hydrochloric acid, at a known amount. So we have a known concentration and a known amount of it, okay, so a known volume. We might not know the concentration, we might know the concentration of uh, the sodium hydroxide, but we need a known amount at least. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to react these until the end point is reached, and that is when all of the hydrochloric acid has reacted. And so that will then produce sodium chloride in solution, plus, put that in solution, plus water. And so this follows the normal acid plus base. Acid plus base makes salt and water. Okay. So let's take a look now at the actual experiment and how we're going to do this. Because this is probably something that you're going to do in the lab. So what we're going to end up with is we're going to end up with a flask. Okay. We have a flask which contains either acid or alkali. Okay. And then above that we have what is known as a burette and this is going to be an awful drawing but you get the picture okay we have a burette which has a tap and we basically can turn this tap here so if this is the tap we can turn the tap and drip our other solution which might be the alkali or the acid into the acid or the alkali in the flask okay and what we're going to do is in this flask so this is known as a conical flask normally you will add exactly 25 centimeter cubed of either your acid or your alkali the way we do that is using a pipette and you've probably seen the small pipettes but they're not really good enough for this case so we use a larger one okay which has a filter on the top so this will be a quick drawing of a pipette. So they're quite large here because they're going to contain 25 centimeter cubed. And on the top, we have our filter. And this also goes over the top and it uses suction in order to fill up the pipette. And it looks something like that. Okay. And so this is our pipette. Pipette. And we fill it up with 25 centimeter cubed. And this is shown as a marking. Let's just change color quickly. A marking here will tell you that that is 25 centimeters cubed. So we fill this up with 25 centimeter cubed and then we pour that into our conical flask okay like so now once we've done that we're ready to use the burette so we place the conical flask under the burette we fill up the burette with whatever it is that we are pouring in and the burette has markings all the way up it now this is a simplification it's actually got lots of markings and those are normally to the nearest 0.05 centimeter cubed 
Okay, so the markings are normally to 0.1, and so obviously you can read to the nearest 0.05 centimeter cubed. Now, because we're using acid and base, we need to know when the reaction is actually finished. And so what we do is we put into our flask, we put in an indicator. Okay, we put in indicator. This isn't always universal indicator, it can be an indicator um, for various different pHs because we need an indicator that is quite precise, okay? And when the end point is reached, the indicator will change color and that tells us that our um, titration has finished. And then we read the amount from our burette, the amount that we poured in, and then we can do calculations with that. So we're basically working out how much of our solution in the burette, be it acid or alkali, is needed to neutralize 25 centimeter cubed of whatever it is we have in our conical flask and then we can do calculations after that. Okay, so now let's have a look at a real example. So we're going to use some real numbers to make this a bit more obvious. So let's say for example we are carrying out the titration of hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide. So this is the reaction we're going to carry out Obviously, that makes sodium chloride plus water. Right, this is the reaction. Now, let's get rid of all this stuff so I can write down parts of the question. So, we are going to put sodium hydroxide in the flask. So, NaOH is going to go in that flask. And, of course, it's going to be 25 centimeter cubed. Okay? Now, we don't know the concentration. Unknown concentration because that is what we're going to work out okay now when we carry out this reaction so let's just rewind a little bit here what we've done is we've taken the conical flask we've filled up the pipettes with 25 centimeter cubed of sodium hydroxide and now we're ready to carry out the titration with hydrochloric acid what we're going to do is we're going to take some hydrochloric acid and that's going to go in the burette. Okay. And let's say that we take 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed solution. Okay. So a 0.8 mole per decimeter cubed solution of hydrochloric acid. And it takes exactly 20 centimeter cubed to completion. So we've added an indicator into our conical flask and the indicator changes color when we've added exactly 20 centimeter cubed. I'm gonna say 20.0 centimeter cubed to show that we've been correct to three significant figures. Okay, so what I want to know is the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Now this might all seem like a lot of information at the moment, but we're gonna go through now. Okay, I'm gonna rub out the pipette just so that we have room to do some calculations on this page. So, from our equation, I can see that the molar relationship between HCl and sodium hydroxide is one to one, because there is the number one in front of HCl and the number one in front of sodium hydroxide. If it was, for example, this as the equation, it would be one to two. But of course, in this one, it's not, so we can say it's one to one. Okay, that helps. Now, because I have the volume and I have the concentration of hydrochloric acid, I can work out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. So what I can say is that for HCl, number of moles is equal to concentration times volume. Now this is an equation you've seen before. So the concentration is 0 0.8, 0 0.8 moles per decimeter cubed, multiplied by the volume. Well, the volume is 20 centimeters cubed, but because this is in decimeters cubed, we need to convert it to decimeters cubed. So that is the same as 0 0.020 decimeters cubed. Okay, so we do that calculation and we are going to get number of moles of 0 0.016 moles. Okay, now our molar ratio tells us that it is a one to one. So this amount of moles of HCl reacts with exactly the same amount of moles of sodium hydroxide. So we can say that sodium hydroxide now has the same number of moles. So we know that 0 0.016 moles 
is equal to concentration times volume. Okay, just using the same equation, N equals CV. But we do know the volume as well. So the volume we can replace with 0 0.025 decimeters cubed. And so now we can rearrange to just get concentration on its own. We need to divide both sides by 0 0.025 because that will obviously cancel out this 0 0.025 here. But what we do to one side, we must do to the other side. Divide by 0 0.025. And that will mean that 0 0.016 divided by 0 0.025 is equal to concentration. And if I finally do this in my calculator, I'll get a final concentration of 0 0.64 moles per decimeter cubed. And so that tells me that the unknown solution of sodium hydroxide that I started with actually has a concentration of 0 0.64 moles per decimeter cubed. And that is my question done. That is how we find out an unknown concentration using a known concentration. The only reason we were able to do that is because the indicator inside the conical flask told us when the reaction had finished. Okay, now one thing you need to remember is that if you're carrying out this reaction, you need to do the reaction more than once because it's quite hard to get an exact reading of when the indicator changes color, so the end point. Okay, if you are pouring in from the burette too quickly, you might miss it and make a mistake and that will mess up your results. So you need to do it at least three times. Okay, so this is carried out at least three times and then you'll take an average of your results after discarding any uh, anomalous results. And you know that they're anomalous if they are very, very different to the rest of your results. Then you ignore those ones and just use another three values as your average. You need three values which are close to each other and then average those. Okay, now one last thing you need to be able to do, which is a lot easier, is sometimes you are asked before we carry out the titration, um, how to, how, well, basically, the concentration of something given the mass of something and a volume. So let me just give you an example using sodium hydroxide. So if, let's say, we have 20 grams of sodium hydroxide, okay? And we're putting that in, let's say, 500 centimeter cubed of water. What is the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed? Well, basically what we need to do is we need to find out, well, how many moles is 20 grams of sodium hydroxide? And then we need to divide it by how many decimeter cubed of water we have. So let me just do the first step. Well, we have 20 grams sodium hydroxide has a molar mass of what? Well, sodium from the periodic table has a mass of, sodium is 23 grams, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is one. Okay, and so we have one of each, so that's 23 plus 16 plus one gives us a total of 40. Okay, now using the equation, number of moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass. We get number of moles is equal to mass, which we're given as 20. And we're going to divide that by 40, giving us a total of 0 0.5 moles. Now remember I said we divide that by the number of decimeter cubes we've got. Well, we have 500 centimeter cubes. 500 centimeter cubed is the same as half a decimeter cubed or 0.5. So what we have is we have 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5. Okay, you can see, let's just make that correct. So 0 0.5, this is our moles, divided by 0 0.500 decimeter cubed. Okay, now that is going to give us a grand total of 1.00 moles per decimeter cubed. Now notice that I've quoted it to three significant figures. Okay, I'm not, even though 0.5 divided by 0.5, you know 
is one. I'm not just going to write one because that suggests that I've only done it to one significant figure. I'm going to write 1.00 moles per decimeter cubed. Okay. All right. So I'm going to stop there. There will be another video coming uh, where I go over more calculations and other examples, which are a little more complicated. But I just wanted to introduce all the concepts to you in one video and have some simple examples. Having said that, if you do have any questions on this, please do feel free to send me a direct email using the link below or post a comment in the comment box and I'll be sure to get back to you. But as usual, please do like and subscribe because there are more videos coming up very soon. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.